If you have at least $40,000, you can own an iconic piece of Sex in the City history. Welcome to Planet Gen, where we have fun on the internet. I'm really excited to talk about this. I saw it and I was like, all right, I got to do a video on it. So let's get into it. And the gist is, you all remember that iconic bird headpiece that Carrie Bradshaw wore in the Sex in the City movie, where she was supposed to get married to Mr. Big, but it didn't happen because he got cold feet. Well, that teal bird headpiece is up for auction at Sotheby's. Let's look at the story. Now, this is from uh, People, and the headline is Carrie Bradshaw's colorful bird of paradise wedding headpiece going up for auction at Sotheby's. So here is a photo of Sarah Jessica Parker, otherwise known as Carrie Bradshaw, wearing the headpiece. She also wore it on And Just Like That. So this is from the And Just Like That episode. So just really cool. So if you remember in the original film, which I did not like, okay, so this was the 2008 film. I, I'm so old. I can't even remember how old these movies are. I remember watching Sex and the City in like the mid 2000s. So Carrie got kind of carried away with her wedding plans. And that was part of the whole storyline. And she ended up getting this like, really amazing Vivian Westwood wedding dress that she kind of upped the ante with the wedding and she kind of like lost touch with like what was happening and that was part of why Mr. Big otherwise known as John Preston played by Chris Noth who's now been canceled due to some allegations but she was supposed to get married to him and the bird headpiece was part of her whole outfit and I did not know the like cultural significance or the history of this headpiece. So when I saw this story, I was like, oh, that's really neat. And then I read a few other articles and it's not just like a prop from a TV show and movie set. There's actually a lot more to it. So let's take a look. So again, here is the photo and let's take a look at the Sotheby's listing. So right now, let me, let me refresh because there are zero, there are zero bids. Okay. Yeah, still zero bids. So on August, I think it was August 31st, we're like a day later, but the this bird headpiece is now up for auction. So you can you can buy this if you have the money and you have a Sotheby's account. If you're not familiar, Sotheby's, Sotheby's is like the bougie auction house for rich people. And they auction off a lot of like very significant items historical stuff, stuff owned by celebrities or famous people, really expensive. And this is the listing. So this is the Sarah Jessica Parker, Sex and the City, and just like that, vintage taxidermied bird of paradise headpiece. And I didn't realize this, but this is a real bird. I thought it was like a fake bird when I saw it. It's from the 1800s. So this is 200 years old. And I mean, look at the condition of the headpiece. It's pretty amazing. So this is a real bird. Like it's not like a, you know, fake feathers. The, and I know this seems a little macabre, but I've seen a few videos about uh, old timey history. And this was a major fashion trend for women in the 1800s. In fact, I think there was an issue because so many birds were being killed for headpieces and for like hats and stuff that uh, some species went extinct or some became endangered. So I mean, check this out. This is just super, all right, let me move this up a little bit. So here's the bird. I don't know what kind of bird it is. Or is it bird of paradise? Is that like the name of the bird? I'm not sure. I'm not like an ornithologist or anything. So I have, I have no idea, but this is the listing. And you can see the estimate that I guess the auction house thinks this will be sold for is between 40 and $70,000. But the starting bid, so you need a minimum of $40,000. Uh, if you want to place a bid, you have to like open an account and stuff. And it looks like right now there's a zero bids and the reserve is not met. So the reserve is sort of like the floor price that the seller is willing to accept. So you can't, obviously they don't want you to bid under $40,000 because you ain't, you ain't getting it. Here's some more photos. I mean, this thing is, it's a very interesting piece. Would I wear it? Probably not. So let's look at the lot details. And it's really kind of interesting. I thought the listing was cool because it gives a lot of details about the piece. So it says, 
uh, styled on Sarah Jessica Parker in the Sex and the City movie as part of Carrie Bradshaw's bridal ensemble and worn once on and just like that as part of Carrie Bradshaw's Met Gala look. Uh, right, it's got the dimensions. Okay, also this is a, yeah, it's got some stuff. You have to be in the United States to purchase this because this is a, uh, uh, you know, real, like an endangered species. Okay, interesting. All right, there's a condition to report, but you have to have an account to look at that. So I couldn't do that. And uh, what's kind of neat is that in the listing, they put a lot of detail on like what this actually is. So it's like, this was Carrie Bradshaw's something blue from the the movie. And again, this was like a big part of her outfit. It was part of the whole scene where like she gets out of the car and like hits him with her flowers and stuff. So, I mean, that like every Sex in the City fan, like, you know what this is. Uh, so, yeah, I forgot that when the show was on, I remember when I was in high school, the show was airing and some, I worked at this like office building and a lot of the, Ladies in the office were watching the show. I was a little young for it. Like, again, it's kind of an adult show, and I was like 16, so it wasn't really something I was watching, but a lot of people I knew were watching the show. So it was on the air between 1998 and 2004. All right, let's take a look here. Um, and they also include some links, and I will put some links below in the description box if you want to take a closer look on your own or even kind of keep track of the listing. I, I want, I'm curious to see how much this will sell for, because I I really don't know. And I also watched this as like uh, Vogue asks her to break down like 17 of her looks, and she does talk about this outfit and the Burke headpiece, and she said that they um, kind of ambushed Michael Patrick King with it. They didn't tell him they were doing this. They just sort of showed up with the headpiece, hoping he would be okay with it, and obviously he was. And for any diehard Sex in the City fan, you were watching it for the fashion. The fashion was a huge part of the show, thanks to costume designer Pat uh, Patricia Field. And, I mean, Carrie in particular had a lot of just very iconic looks throughout the show. We've got, like, the tutu, like her dress of the newspaper fabric, her huge ball gown from, like, that final episode where she is with uh, Alexander Petrovsky. So Carrie Bradshaw was a, I know I'm old guys, I'm dating myself, but Carrie Bradshaw back in the late 90s to the mid 2000s was a fashion queen. So this is a huge, this is like a huge deal. All right, let's take a look more at the listing. Okay, so yeah, so you can bid on this if you got at least, you know, $40,000, which I know is like as much as a, a pretty nice car in this day and age, even, you know, with our, everything going on. And the auction closes on September 14th. So if you're watching this after September 14th, uh, the auction is over. So I was curious to see who owned this, like, headpiece. Was it from the show? Was it from Patricia Field? Like, who was actually the seller of the item? And I found out. So I was like, okay. So I did a little bit more. I was looking a little bit more because I was just very curious if you're not aware, I, I do some sewing myself. I do some sewing. I do some quilting. In fact, I have a whole other YouTube channel you probably don't know about that's all about sewing. So I, I do like uh, I do like any resources or, you know, kind of neat stories about fashion or about how clothing is constructed or accessories. I've made purses myself, other stuff like that. I'm not great with clothes. It's, it's kind of hard, but I'm, I'm super interested. So I was curious to see what the backstory was behind the headpiece. And I found another article. This one is from the uh, New York Post. And all right, it's got the, okay, I just love this image of her. Like she's getting ready to pelt him with the flowers. Man, that scene must have been interesting to film. All right, so I found out that the, the actual owner of the headpiece is um, vintage clothing dealer, Shannon Hoey. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. And she runs, she's doing an auction. So she's actually auctioning a bunch of stuff worn by celebrities like Madonna, Sarah Jessica Parker, Michelle Obama, as part of a threads like edition called Fashion Icons. So this auction is estimated to raise about $160,000. Uh, Hoy is a longtime lover of classic clothing. And she has a fashion showroom for vintage pieces called New York Vintage. 
So I was like, oh, that's really cool. Because I always, I'm always fascinated by the like entertainment industry in terms of like the props and the costumes, like where they get everything, how they source the items you see in TV shows and movies. I just find it really interesting. So um, this lady said that the, so she basically loaned out the bird headpiece for the TV show and the movie. Uh, so she actually owns it. The show does not own it. Sarah Jessica Parker does not own it. So I just thought this article was really cool. So this uh, this uh, New York vintage showroom has provided vintage clothing for movies like Wolf of Wall Street, The Great Gatsby, Men in Black 3. Do they go back in time in that? I don't remember. And that's got to be just a really like cool job, you know, to sort, you know, to provide things for uh, enter the entertainment business. I did um, a while back. I interviewed a guy for my sewing channel who is an embroidery uh um, he's like an embroidery digitizer. So it's kind of a complicated thing. I do do some light embroidery and he has gotten some commissions from uh, TV shows and films to create custom embroider items. So he was telling me a story about how he provided um, some patches for like, they were like fake police badges for Breaking Bad. So I was like, how did you get that job? That's so awesome. So it's just kind of, it seems like this is such a niche thing. Like, and with a lot of these different kind of facets of fashion, like there's like a guy for it or like, you know, some, like a person for it. So, so the guy I had interviewed for my channel, he was like, you know, the embroidery guy. So I feel like all of these stylists and costume designers must have like a person, you know, they got a guy for it. You know, they got a person to do, uh, you know, vintage stuff, you know, like, so, and I even was reading an article too. I do a little bit of quilting about uh, somebody who had their quilts purchased for use in like a TV show and they explain the whole process. I'm just super fascinated by it. All right. So I was curious. So to see like this um, showroom uh, person talk about the, the bird headpiece. So the bird, the bird of paradise headpiece is actually called a fascinator. That's what uh, kind of a hat is called. Uh, a lot of like British people still wear fascinators. Like you see the royal family wear those kind of like headpieces. They're not quite hats, but you know, like the ones that kind of sit on your head and you got to use like bobby pins and stuff to keep them on. That's like what it is. In fact, I did make a fascinator for an old Halloween costume, but it was supposed to look like a rubber ducky in the bathtub. So a bit unusual, but there's a lot of like novelty headpieces like that. And you may see like it's not, it's more of a European thing. I don't think a lot of Americans wear fascinators. I, I don't wear hats myself. So, you know, so here's another photo. Um, so, okay, so Shannon, the person who runs the vintage showroom says, uh, she obtained the pieces at an, at an auction of collectibles being uh, deaccessioned from a museum. And it landed in the movie after Parker and the wardrobe crew paid a visit to Hoy's showroom. Uh, she says, we've been a revolving source for the Sex and the City universe. Sarah loves mixing contemporary with vintage and fell in love with the bird hat. She decided it would be perfect to finish her look. It is one of the few garments from the show that she wore but did not keep. Very interesting. And you all remember probably from this season of And Just Like That, uh, Carrie again busted out the headpiece when she repurposed her old Vivian Westwood wedding dress for the Met Gal. So here's my gripe with that episode. I was like, I had like secondhand nervousness throughout the whole episode. And here's why. So the whole storyline was that Carrie's character had asked uh, Jackie, you know, the podcast co-host. Nobody really knows why he's on the show played by actor and comedian Bobby Lee. So Bobby Lee's character, Jackie, is married to uh, a woman named Smoke, who's like a fa an aspiring fashion designer. And in the episode, uh, the whole the whole plot is that Smoke is at Carrie's place on the day of this Met Gala, and she's like working on Carrie's outfit, and it's like a total fail. So she's working on this dress, nothing was going right, and Carrie. So she's making like she's trying to make like some sort of like a like it's almost like a tube dress or something. It was really weird, and I had a lot of. I, I have some gripes with like the whole way it turned out because I don't think a professional seamstress or even an aspiring fashion designer 
nobody's going to start making this outfit the day of the event. Like, custom clothing takes forever to make. If you're trying to get, like, a, let's say, like, a custom wedding dress or a custom formal wear gown, that's going to take months. So the fact that Smoke was start, basically starting this project the day of, I was like, I was like, girl, you are setting yourself up for failure here. This is a horrible idea. And it made her look, I felt like she was not like ready for prime time. I was like, girl, you are not ready for this job. You should have started this months ago. There should have been several fittings, like the whole design process, you know, all of that. Like the fact that this fashion designer is making the outfit the day of was just completely ridiculous. And I found that to be super like not like I thought that was just totally outlandish and not at all what would have happened in a real scenario. So she ends up not being able to make the dress like no surprise there because you're starting the day of and she only ends up making like a like a cape or something or like a shawl. So Carrie ends up wearing the shawl here. I, we can I think we can see this. Carrie ends up wearing the shawl with no dress or whatever it is. OK, let me show you this. Okay, so here we go. So she she's wearing the bird head piece here. She's got the repurposed wedding dress from her not wedding uh, to Mr. Big. And then the only thing Smoke ended up making was this like teal colored wrap thing. I don't know if it was like a cape or something. So that's the only thing. And I'm amazed Smoke was able to get that done because again, that's not like a day project. I sew, so it takes freaking forever. So I thought that was just a, like a real big miss on the writer's part because I was like, that would never, if that did happen in real life, it would be a disaster. And it did end up being a dis disaster. But I think that just proved that, again, if that was like legit, Smoke was not ready for this uh, project at all. I think she was way in way over her head. And I see that on a lot of the like beginner sewing subreddits and stuff. If you go online, is that people just are not. I think a lot of people new to sewing bite off way more they can than they can chew. And they're like, oh, can I make a ball gown? I'm like, not for your first project. I would not do that. I've been sewing for 10 years and I would not be able to sew like a ball gown or anything even close to that. I can barely do like a base, you know, clothing is really difficult to sew. In my opinion, I think quilting is like way easier. So that's what I was like, smoke girl, like you're just this is not a good idea. I mean, she does look great. What do you think, though? Do you like the bird headpiece? Do you hate the bird headpiece? I know, like, people have mixed feelings about it. And obviously, I know a lot of people probably wouldn't be a fan of the fact that they you're finding out that it's a real bird. But again, I think you have to keep in mind, too, that this was just like a different, this was just a different moment of time. And this was just something everybody did. Uh, it was like, if you were a lady of leisure in class back in the 1800s, uh, you, were you were probably wearing a a bird hat or something like that. I'm not really in, again, not really my thing, but I was like, okay. Okay, so, okay. Oh, so here's one of the other items that's up for auction. This is uh, Michelle Obama's dress. So I thought that was, I just like the backstory and hearing about like how, you know, where the bird headpiece came from and all this stuff. I just think it's really cool. Oh, what a gorgeous dress. This is a Norman Norell dress. Okay, that's vintage. Also, up for auction is a lace veil worn by Madonna on the cover of Vanity Fair. This is estimated to go from uh, $10,000 to $30,000. So this is from Feb a February uh, cover of Vanity Fair. Okay, so here's a that's a that's a really nice that's a really nice veil. I guess if you're getting married and you love Madonna, maybe that could be something you could like wear at your wedding or something. And of course, I had to look up the website because I was curious. So here's the website. And again, I'm going to link all of this stuff below. So if you want to check out New York Vintage, if you want to look at the Sotheby's listing, you can. I thought that would be cool. So I was just really fascinated about like this whole business. I think this would be a really like just totally neat job to have is like you're sourcing vintage pieces. So here's some of the stuff they've got from their rental archive. Just amazing things. And what I'm so impressed by too is the condition these items are in after such a long period of time. I just think it's amazing how well some of these items have been preserved and loved and obviously well cared for to be in this type of condition today. Also, they got an Instagram 
their Instagram is fire. It's uh, at New York Vintage Inc. Uh, so go ahead and follow them. I just think this is a really cool. I was really glad to discover a New York Vintage. I just think this is such a neat, awesome, just like thing, you know. So here's their Instagram. What an amazing, like just some amazing stuff. I'm, I, I do have an interest in vintage fashion. I think it's just super cool. And some of the old styles of stuff, I'm just, I, I just think stuff, you know, they're, they're making clothing and making accessories is such an art form in itself. I just really appreciate it. And I just wanted to share this because I just thought this was just so cool. But yes, if you have at least 40 grand and you want to, you know, drop some cash on an item from uh, the Sex and the City movie, then this might be for you if you got at least 40 grand. Uh, again, they have no bids yet, but again, you know, maybe this video will help. I don't know. So let me know what you think down below in the comments. Do you have an, I know everyone has like a strong opinion on the, the bird thing and her wedding outfit. Also, can we not talk about how Mr. Big was kind of trash? Like the whole show, I just didn't, I didn't understand why she kept like coming back for more. I'm like, he's treating you like shit, Carrie. Like, just go, go be with Aiden, go be with one of the other you know, many guys you've dated. I just felt like, I felt like Mr. Big was not a good, like, I would not want to date Mr. Big. I would not want to, you know, have a relationship with him. He just seems like kind of an asshole. And he was, I don't know, like, I just, I'm, I don't know. I, I never really got the appeal. I know he's like rich as fuck, but you know, I don't know. I'm not, he would not be my uh, choice for a boyfriend or husband or any type of, of partner here. So, Anyways, that's just what I got to say. Let me know what you think below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button on your way out and subscribe for more fun videos.